What's good YouTube? In this guide I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about the Beast Mastery Hunter in 10.2. We'll go over talents, rotation, stat priority, gear, consumables, enchants and any macros that I use. Moving into the class side of the talent tree then, we'll go over some of the notable talents we'll be running as a BM Hunter. We won't be taking misdirection in this spec as most of our damage comes from our pets and it doesn't actually get redirected to the tank. Only our personal damage does through abilities like Barb Shot, so misdirect is just not worth the pickup. Post Haste is a vital pickup defensively. Not only does it give us extra mobility, it also frees us from movement impairing effects, and there's actually quite a few dots or debuffs that are linked to movement impairments, so we can get rid of these by simply disengaging. As a hunter, we're notorious for being squishy, so we'll be picking up Nature's Endurance to beef up one of our biggest defensives. This also allows us to take Rejuvenating Wind to get some extra max health and healing. For this talent node here, you can choose between Binding Shot or Scatter Shot. Most people do default to the Binding Shot as it can be a decent AoE stun, it just does need some extra coordination. But Scatter Shot is actually a really underrated pickup as you gain an extra single target stop. Personally, I'm going to be trying out Scatter Shot more this patch as I feel you can gain some massive value from it. Master Marksman is going to make up a lot of your overall damage. This is because of how often we crit thanks to talents like Thrill of the Hunt, Keen Eyesight and just general crit that we value through our gear. Finally, down the bottom we'll opt for Alpha Predator to get two charges of kill command as this enables a core part of our rotation. And down the middle we'll take Death Chakram to get a 10% damage increase every 45 seconds. Next we'll move on to the Beast Mastery specific talents. There's a few different builds dependent on the content you're clearing so I'll leave timestamps below for each set. We'll start with the Mythic Plus or AoE build for BM. The notable talents here include the new Master Handler down the right side. This talent means that you'll want to spread out your Barb Shots on 2-3 to three targets so that each time it deals damage it reduces the cooldown of our main damage source which is Kill Command. I'll show you guys a macro later to make this easier. We'll take our new burst 2 minute cooldown in Call of the Wild, giving us massive amounts of AoE with a bloody frenzy node under it. This capstone causes our pets to permanently have beast cleave for the 20 second duration of Call of the Wild, as well as causing all your pets to stomp every time a new pet is summoned. During this cooldown, your kill command and barb shots will be on a 50% reduced cooldown. Due to our tier set giving so much power to our dire beast, we'll now take dire command and also dire frenzy to really flesh out how much damage our beasts put out. And then this plays really nicely into Dire Pack as our other capstone as every 5 beasts that we summon will reduce the cooldown of Kill Command by 50% for 8 seconds, allowing us to really spam it with good Master Handler uptime. Remember that through our tier set every time we press Bestial Wrath we're summoning an extra Dire Beast so that is just going to contribute even more towards Dire Pack. Moving on to the Raid or Single Target build, here we're going to take Thrill of the Hunt which should give us a permanent 8% extra crit making our Frenzy maintenance very important. We'll grab Dire Beast and Bloodshed to funnel even more single target damage. We'll still pick up Call of the Wild, but instead of taking the Capstone underneath, we'll pick up Piercing Fangs giving us a big passive damage boost through our crit. As far as stats go for the BM Hunter, Weapon DPS is going to be your most important stat alongside Agility. For single target, your best secondaries are everything except Versatility, and your best secondary stats for Mythic Plus or AoE are Mastery and Haste followed by Critical Strike. Again, versatility is not a desired stat for BM. As a general guide, try and get your haste to around 30%, your crit to about 44% and then load into mastery. Crafting depends on where your focus lies as a BM hunter. If you want to maximize raid performance, then you should start by crafting the adaptive Dracothist arm guards, followed by the allied guards of the Sansok Khan. If you're more focused on Mythic Plus content, then start by crafting the Signet of Titanic Insight with a blue silken lining embellishment. Next, you can craft a weapon, again with a blue silken lining embellishment, or you could always opt for the adaptive Dracothist arm guards. After these options, crafting a trinket is not a bad shout if you haven't been lucky with trinkets, and the same applies for a weapon. You can craft a bow of the Dragon Hunters or Old Smokey. After this, just craft whatever your lowest item level slots are. For trinkets, your best in slots will be Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge from the Council of Dreams, and then ideally you'll want to get your hands on a Mirror of Fractured Tomorrows from Murazon's Rise in Mythic Plus. This combo gives you some nice passive stats while also generating some massive bursts through the on-use for your Call of the Wild. You'll always want to line up your on-use trinket with Call of the Wild. Witherbark's Branch is also a really nice pick that will line up with every single Call of the Wild by default, and as mentioned in the crafting part of this guide, the Idol of the Dreamer is a great pickup if you're struggling with trinkets. For enchants, you'll want to put the high intensity thermal scanner on your weapon. You'll enchant your head with the incandescent essence. You'll enchant with avoidance on your cloak and braces to help you become a tad more tanky. Waking stats will be your chest enchant. On your belt, you'll rock with the shadowed belt clasp. Fierce armor kit for your legs. On your boots, you'll apply a Watcher's Loam. And for your rings, I recommend you to sim what your best stat enchants will be, but anything except versatility here is a good recommendation. 
For consumables, you'll run a file of tepid versatility in pretty much every situation. Elemental Potion of Ultimate Power will be your DPS potion of choice, with the new Dreamwalker's Healing Potion being your go-to healing potion. On your weapon, you'll want to use completely safe rockets for some extra fire damage, and if you can afford it, the Dreambound Augment Rune will be used in all situations. For your food buff, you'll want to consume a feast ideally, but deviously deviled eggs are a good backup as some personal food. Lastly, for your gems, you'll want to run with a skillful or fierce Unlimited Diamond as your Primalist gem. Then you can fill the remaining slots with whatever stats your specific character needs. You'll want to run a sim to figure this out. Generally, I'd recommend a Haste or Mastery Heavy gem for Mythic Plus. Finally, getting into the rotation. Some general tips for your Beast Mastery rotation involve keeping up Frenzy at 3 stacks as much as possible. This will be made much easier with talents like Wild Cool. You ideally never want to overcap on Kill Command or Barb Shot. Sometimes this isn't possible due to procs or cooldown reduction, but if you try and keep them from overcapping, you'll gain DPS. You'll also want to make sure you send your abilities on cooldown like Bestial Wrath and Death Chakram. Now getting into the opener, we'll start with a single target build for raiding. You'll start by placing a Hunter's Mark on the boss pre-pull, then you'll fire two barb shots into a kill command, followed by Call of the Wild. Then we use Bloodshed and Bestial Wrath. After these cooldowns, use kill command again, into a barb shot, then back to a kill command. Then we're going to Death Chakram. And finally, we use Dire Beast. Following this opener, you'll proceed with the following priority list. Use barb shot to refresh Frenzy when it's about to fall off. Then we cast kill command if it's about to overcap. Use Call of the Wild on cooldown. Then we use Bloodshed on cooldown. Then use Bestial Wrath on cooldown and finally use Death Chakram on cooldown. Then we're going to use a Kill Command on cooldown. Next use Barb Shot to prevent it from overcapping. Then we use Dire Beast, followed by Kill Shot. And finally we use Cobra Shot to fill. Now we'll move on to the Mythic Plus rotation, starting with this opener. Use two Barb Shots on different targets. Then we use Call of the Wild, followed by Bestial Wrath, into a Kill Command. Then we Barb Shot a third target, followed by another Kill Command into a Death Chakram, and then finally use another Kill Command. After this opener, we'll follow this priority list for AoE. Use Barb Shot to refresh Frenzy when it's about to fall off. Then we use Multi Shot to maintain Beast Cleave on your pets, and try and refresh this as late as possible. Then we use Bestial Wrath on cooldown, followed by Call of the Wild on cooldown. Then we cast Kill Command. Use Death Chakram here. After that, we'll spend a Barb Shot to prevent it from overcapping. Then we use Multi Shot if Beast Cleave has less than two global cooldowns remaining. And finally, we use Cobra Shot if we have more than 80 focus. Looking at pets, you'll generally always want to use a Tenacity pet as you gain an extra defensive through Fortitude of the Bear. This increases your max health by 20% and heals you for that same value. This coupled with the extra 7.5% max health you gain from Endurance Training makes you much more tanky, which is something we need as a hunter. The only exception to using a Tenacity pet is if your group does not have a Bloodlust class, you'll want to quickly swap out to a Ferocity pet to use it and then swap back after the fight. The leech from your Ferocity pet doesn't actually translate to healing you because it's not actually you doing the damage, so that makes the Ferocity pets a lot less valuable for the BM Hunter. Pets I'd recommend then are generally a Spirit Beast for a tiny extra heal, though this can add up over the course of a dungeon, but also there are Stone Hounds that have an Eternal Guardian ability which allows you to instantly res your pet every 8 minutes. This is perfect for players that often see their pets dying as this could technically be classed as a DPS gain for them. Finally, here's the macros that I use as a BM Hunter. I'll leave a paste bin in the description for you guys to copy. Attached to most of my damaging abilities, I use a macro that makes my pet automatically swap to that target and also use their basic attack as there can be a slight delay on them auto casting this, so this turns into a minimal DPS increase. I've also tied a mouse over macro specifically to my barb shot, allowing me to spread them without changing targets. This is very important for maximizing your master handler talent to get the most value. I use at cursor macros for my traps and binding shot. This makes it so that the green swirly doesn't come up whenever I press it and I can just pre-place my cursor and throw the trap to wherever my cursor already is. I do have a mouse over macro for spirit mend when I'm using a spirit beast. It's probably a little bit overkill as the healing isn't that significant, so it's probably better to just have it on auto cast. And then I use an at focus macro for abilities like counter shot. This means that I can focus damage into a target that I don't necessarily need to kick. And then my kick target I can just place on my focus at the start of any pool and then use these abilities. But that's all you need to know for the Beast Mastery Hunter, so hopefully you guys were able to learn a few things. If you did, then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.